At night, at the hotel, I watch a classic about American factory farming. Here you go, Leo. Psst. Leo. Who are you? And how did you know my name? I am Mufius. And I know a lot about you. Have you heard of the Matrix? The Matrix? Do you want to know what it is? Okay. The Matrix is all around you, Leo. It is the story we tell ourselves about where meat and animal products come from. This family farm is a fantasy. Take the blue pill and stay here in the fantasy. Take the red pill and I'll show you the truth. Welcome to the real world. Wow! What is this horrible place? This is a factory farm, Liz. Places like this are where most eggs, milk, and meat come from. How did this happen? I'll show you. In the mid-20th century, greedy agriculture corporations began modifying sustainable family farming to maximize their profits at great cost to both humans and animals. Factory farming was born. Animals are packed as closely together as possible. Most never see sunlight, touch ground, or get fresh air. Many can't even turn around. These cruel conditions cause fights and disease amongst the animals. To fix this, the corporate machine began systematic mutilations, practices such as debeaking chickens. And they started adding a constant dosage of antibiotics to their feed just to keep these poor wretches alive. This overuse of antibiotics breeds super strains of resistant disease-causing germs. Every day we get closer to an epidemic that cannot be stopped. What's that smell? 12 million pounds of excrement. This pollutes the air and groundwater. That's why communities near factory farms often suffer from high levels of related sicknesses. Well, it smells like shh. And what's more, factory farming corporations have been destroying communities and mistreating their workers for decades. Since 1950, over 2 million small hog farms have disappeared. If they continue at this rate, there'll be no real independent family farms left. That is the Matrix, Leo. The lie we tell ourselves about where our food comes from. But it's not too late. There is a resistance. Count me in! Washington, city of politicians, policymakers, lobbyists, and activists. Think of the seals when you buy your meals. Boycott Canada. Today, a demonstration against the seal hunt is held at the Canadian Embassy. Think of the seals when you buy your meals. This demonstration was organized by the Humane Society of the United States, America's largest animal welfare organization with 10 million members. 30 minutes later, I have an appointment on Capitol Hill with Wayne Purcell, the president of the Humane Society. Hi. Hello there. Hello Hi. There. Welcome to the United States. Welcome to Washington, our nation's capital. Thank you. And we're so proud of what you've accomplished in Thank Holland you. with your election. We all took note last November of how you were elected, and you're the first party for the animals in the, in the world yeah, to achieve this. Yeah, true. So thank you, and thank we look you. forward to learning about what you've done. Oh, okay, okay, so nice to meet you finally. You're the biggest organization on animal welfare. Yes, we, we are. We have 10 million supporters here in the United States in terms of paying supporters. Yeah. And then, of course, we have millions more who believe in what we're doing, and we're here to organize that sentiment mm -hmm. to achieve political reforms for animals, okay. among doing other things. We. We try to pressure corporations to do the right thing, and we educate the public, and we do hands-on care of animals as well. But the political work here in Congress is very important. Hey! Oh, get him, Mr. 
Are you ready? You guys quit. One, two. Factory farming is the biggest abuse of all because in the United States alone, there are 10 billion animals raised for food. It's an extraordinary number. And the average American eats 80 or 85 animals per year. And we want to see that number reduced and we want to see the animals out of these terrible confinement systems. Why do you think Al Gore didn't mention factory farming? You know, I, I think that he probably thought that, that um, he was giving a lot of information already Mm -hmm. to people with an inconvenient truth and maybe he thought people would shut down if it affected them too personally because it gets very personal when you're talking about eating animals and you're talking about something that is part of the American diet uh, he thought oh well, this is going too far but the public is slowly waking up I do not believe that we can have a good situation for animals or the environment if we continue to eat as much meat as we are eating. But even if you reduce your total consumption by half, and instead of eating 80 animals, eat 40, you cut in half the greenhouse gas emissions. So we do think that our fork is a powerful tool. So they're clear about this in the United States. The power lies with the consumer. As consumers, we can make a difference by changing our diets. Matt Prescott says that meat is the number one cause of global warming, and he gives a good example of this. If every American ate no chicken for just one day a week, then this would reduce just as much pollution as taking 500,000 cars off the road. <laughs> It's funny. Okay, I can hear you thinking meat and other animal products are bad for the environment. Ah, I get it. But don't we need meat and milk for our health? Where else do we get the calcium for our bones, the iron for our blood, and the vitamins and minerals we need to keep us healthy? Advertisers and food producers have done so much to indoctrinate us that you nearly end up believing. Signs of lamb are only one ninety nine a kilo. The message is clear. Milk is essential, meat is good for you, cheese is healthy for us all. But who benefits most from meat and dairy products? The consumer or the producer? Do we really need all that animal protein? Generally speaking, there's not a real problem for health if we have much lower meat consumption. And there are potential benefits. I mean, after all, colon cancer is one of the commonest cancers in high-income countries. And the risk of colon cancer is higher with high meat consumption. So there'll be a real benefit in terms of lowered colon cancer risk, for example. Going from our level of consumption to something that's just a bit below half of that uh, would not involve any significant health harms and would almost certainly bring health benefits.